I can feel my chin implant from inside my mouth. Is it too high and pressing on my mental nerve? I've had my chin implant for slightly over a year now, and it's had numbness and tightness the entire time. I thought it would eventually get back to normal, but it never did. But tonight I was feeling the inside of my mouth, and realized that I can actually feel the implant from inside my mouth. I can only feel it on the numb side. Does this mean that the implant is too high and is pressing on my mental nerve? Is there any chance that removing it will relieve some of the pressure, tightness, numbness? Thank you for your question. You submitted your question with some photos and you describe in your question a situation where you underwent a chin implant procedure approximately a year prior. And it appears from how you describe that you never really felt comfortable after this procedure was done. You described that you feel the implant from the inside of your mouth and that you've been dealing with the sensation of tightness and numbness. And you're uh, asking if whether or not this is a result of the implant pressing on the mental nerve and whether or not removal will be, this, will be indicated to help provide you with relief. Well, I can certainly share with you my guidance uh, with this limited information and photos in the absence of a physical exam or the details of your actual surgery. A little bit of background, I'm a board certified cosmetic surgeon and fellowship trained oculofacial plastic and reconstructive surgeon. I've been in practice in Manhattan and Long Island for over 20 years. Chin implant placement is very common in a facial aging practice such as mine to help enhance the projection of the chin uh, depending on the indication and the degree of correction necessary uh, as well as in the past few years uh, the use of uh, fillers to help enhance chins uh, without, without implantation so I have a lot of experience in this area. So to begin with I think you're definitely on the right track in terms of the causing of, of the association of the implant putting pressure on the nerve, uh, causing you to have these sensations. The anatomy is always with the source of the explanation. Essentially, the mental nerve or the nerves that go exit through the mental foramen of the mandible are usually high enough away from the tail of an anatomical chin implant such that it is usually not a problem with impingement. And so the routine follow-up for a patient who has a chin implant is pretty straightforward. Uh, and patients usually feel really happy about having the projection of their chin and, um, and don't really think much about it. Now, like any other implant, and no matter how experienced the surgeon is, it's, it's good until it's not. And sometimes implants can be displaced and, and behave in ways that you don't really would expect. And be, practicing in New York City, I have, gotten, I have seen patients come for second opinions about their chin implants done by some of the most well-established and highly experienced surgeons in the country and the world, and, so, and they still have problems and challenges. So that's just the reality of the practice of surgery. I think one of the ways to also understand this in my first question would be is how large was the chin implant? A lot of times people who have strong overbites where the mandible and the maxilla, the upper part, the upper jaw uh, bone is actually misaligned such that the, there's a significant overbite very often there's more, there's a significant amount of projection needed and which means that if the person isn't going to go through orthognathic surgery or what's called uh, sliding genioplasty or, or like I said orthognathic surgery where the bones are broken and, and, and realigned and plates and everything else are done, sometimes a surgeon will try to be uh, more ambitious and place a larger chin implant to give the patient more projection. And it's not just the projection or the thickness of the implant in the front that's, the, that's, that's, that's there, but also the tail of the implant can also be wider. 
and that can be what may be the factor and variable in your situation. Now colleagues of mine um, would sometimes uh, trim these implants and try to get have the patient basically go through an implant exchange. Um, others, um, I think myself included, would probably just take out the implant and allow for some healing to occur to see if at least the patient can become comfortable again. So I think that ultimately it is important for you to have this dialogue with your surgeon um, who placed the implant. The surgeon, oper you know, operating surgeon knows what was done, knows the details, the type of implant that was placed, and would probably be best qualified to remove the implant for you if so indicated. As an aside, you may not necessarily want to just get another implant. Um, you may want to, like, uh, as I mentioned earlier, explore the possibility of any uh, dental oral maxillofacial solutions. And if you want to be even more conservative, you can also go with long-lasting injectable fillers. As I mentioned, uh, we do something called structural volumizing where we place injectable fillers that are thicker at the level of the bone to provide chin projection, which, because it's on the bone, actually works very, very well and can last for more than one year and is fairly straightforward and takes not that long to do. So I think that uh, you don't have to necessarily hesitate about losing the appearance um, in favor of dealing with your discomfort because I think it's very difficult for, for you to uh, clearly keep functioning if this is bothering you as much as it is at this point. And since there is an anatomic solution that can probably help you, I think that probably makes the most sense. So I hope that was helpful. I wish you the best of luck. Thank you for your question.